let's talk about some healthy habits that you can incorporate into your life, especially coming up on the new year. New habits to bring into 2021. I'm not gonna tell you to make your bed because you already know that. These are 10 habits that I incorporated into my life in 2020 that changed me, made me better, and habits that I want to bring into 2021 to level up our lives. The first healthy habit is to dedicate a day each week where you do something for yourself or do something that makes you happy. I feel like life is constantly like a dog chasing its tail, you know? There's always something else to do, something you need to get done. And I think sometimes we don't give enough attention, love to ourselves. So setting aside some time, if you only have time for a few hours each week, or maybe you have time, maybe 10 minutes a day, find something that really brings you joy, makes you happy. It's not for work, it's not for school. Habit number two is to end and start your day off with gratitude. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Some people like to journal, other people like to just think about it in their head. I'm usually this one. I do wanna get more into actually writing it down because I just think waking up and being grateful for things and ending the day, it just really makes you a happier person. Don't get me wrong, things can suck. No matter how bad things get, there's always something that is going right. If you don't know where to start with this, I kind of started this tradition with my boyfriend where if we're FaceTiming or if we're saying bye at night or texting, the last thing we tell each other is three things we're grateful for that day. And you can start off small with the basics like seeing your family, your friends, and your home. But once you start with that, I think it's better to dive deeper. Like who are you grateful for and why are you grateful for them? Are you grateful for naps on your carpet in the living room? Once you really start honing in on the minuscule things that usually get overlooked, you become a happier person. I'm grateful when my dog is walking in the rain and then he does like the shake. It's so cute. Habit number three, document your memories, whether it's photos, a journal, or a scrapbook is really what is your preference. I am such like a nostalgic person. I love creating memories and also remembering them because I feel like there's a lot of moments that are really awesome and then you forget about it whether it's in like a few months or a few years you forget about it and what I started doing is writing in my journal if something really awesome happened that day even if it's just like a little entry and I'll look back and I would have totally forgotten about this memory but you get to kind of like relive moments through it and it's just made my life better. I consider making memories a healthy habit and documenting them because if you're having a bad day it's kind of a reminder that things do get better and that there are good days ahead. Number four is create a morning routine for yourself. This was my main goal for 2020 and I have done it. And you can do it too. I'm gonna do a morning routine soon because it is just amazing. I look forward to my mornings now when I used to just like wanna stay in bed all day. How you start the day really sets the tone for how your day is going to go. Humans are also just creatures of habit and routine. So having a set morning one, having a set night one can really help to elevate and change your life. You don't have, you don't to, have love to love the morning, the morning time, time to have, to a, have morning a morning routine. routine. Number five and one of my favorite ones is to do a 10 minute cleanup every night. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. Start small because usually when we set super broad goals for ourselves, it can get kind of daunting to do. Basically what you're gonna do is before you go to sleep, whether it's in the midst of your night routine or right before you go to bed, clean up your space. I pretty much just have my room to take care of, but if you have like your own apartment or house, pick your stuff up off the floor, wash the stuff that's in the sink. No one wants to wake up to that. Whenever I wake up to a mess, I'm just like, no, no, no. When you have a clean space, you have a clear mind, you can move up the amount of time that you clean. I just feel like once you get started, you wanna keep going. Instead of stuff piling on and on and on and you only have one set day to clean the house, you can do little five minute, 10 minute cleans that can really add up and make a difference so that you don't have a huge mess on that one set day. Number six, put your legs up a wall. You might be like, Ava, what are you talking about? I learned about this when I used to do volleyball back in the good old day. Whether you're an athlete or not, you should do this. It is so, so good for you. Basically all day when you're walking around just doing your everyday average normal life stuff, you're obviously on your feet, you're doing things. And by the end of the day, you've been on your feet for however many hours. There's a ton of benefits. Try it out, especially if you're someone who works out a lot or you're on your feet a bunch. I promise it will change the game. Number seven, replace your screen time with something else. It could be reading, writing, painting, drawing, something that isn't on a screen. One, all these things are good for you. It promotes creativity. Sometimes we can get so sucked into what's on our phones when there's better things we can do with our time that make us feel better. I have lowered my screen time by 
hours. These are two recent fiction books that I was absolutely in love with. I have a highlight on my Instagram for all of my recent book recommendations if you want to check that out. But one of my main tips if you want to focus on reading and not get distracted by your phone is putting your phone in another room. I'm so much more productive and happier after I'm done reading versus after I'm done scrolling on my phone because usually it's just mindless scrolling. You guys know how it goes. Do that more. It's good for your brain and we're not meant to be staring at screens all the time. So if you want to lower your screen time, that is one of my biggest tips. Habit number eight is incorporating movement into every day. It can be big or small. It's still an accomplishment. I think sometimes the act of like working out can be so scary. Not scary, but eh, kind of dreadful sometimes. We make ourselves believe that we need to do this crazy hour hit workout, run a few miles, but any type of movement is good for you. It can be something big like that if you're into that, but it can also be something small. I just think one of the most important mindset shifts to have is instead of being like, I have to work out, think of it as you get to work out. Thinking about that has made me so much more motivated and it's truly made me grateful for the body that I have. Big or small, movement is movement and our bodies are meant to move. We feel good when we move. No one ever regrets a workout. Rest days are just important as days that you work out. Number nine, be more present in moments. This is one of the habits that I I'm really looking forward to working on in 2021 because I think so much about the future sometimes that I forget that life is here and now. The future doesn't even exist. And when you think about the future too much, that's when you can get really anxious and worried for it when the only moment that's real is right now. And that's what we need to focus on. Number 10, last but definitely not least, is to take care of your body. Whether that's stretching, focusing on your posture, eating healthy foods, taking care of your skin. I feel like sometimes we fail to realize that this is the only body we're ever gonna have, our one true home. And it's important to take care of that. So taking care of your mental health, your physical health, that's all super important. And sometimes it gets neglected. Make a list, that's definitely something that I do. I'll put down in my to-do list, make sure you stretch, do your skincare. I have a ton of like body care things. So I have like this Accu pressure mat that helps so much with the blood flow and like muscle tightness. It's so nice. Ooh, I have this foot roller, which sounds a little weird, but it's just like this ball that I roll my foot on. And I don't wanna talk about feet more than we have to, but it's important to take care of them. All you do is put this on the ground and simply roll your foot. These are also so nice because you basically do this except on your feet and it spreads out your toes. These are my favorite feet products. <laughs> Obviously, you guys know we can eat clean, we can drink a ton of water. This stuff is good for you. Drink more of it. When you're taking care of your body and yourself, you feel good. So those are things I've been trying to do. I've been trying to like focus on my posture because I don't want to have super bad back problems when I'm older. So, so you gotta take preventative action sometimes. I'd rather be proactive to something rather than reactive. And that is all the healthy habits that I wanna incorporate into my life in 2021 that I have incorporated and that have already changed my life. Make sure you comment down below some of your healthy habits that you are including in your life or that you want to, because I'd love to know. I think the number one thing is to not do too much at once. I think that can be super overwhelming to incorporate too much at once. So take it slow. I think that's the best approach. This is my last video for 2020. So peace out to that. All right, I'll see you next year.